Now comes one of the most frustrating things that most of my students will face. They come across the word chromosomes, chromatin, chromatid, and sister chromatids, okay? I have been teaching for quite some time. Most of my students feel like banging their heads against the wall because there are so many C's over here. Chromosomes, chromatins, chromatids, sister chromatids. They're like, when do I, what is what? Are they all the same things? Why is it this? Why is it like that? Um, when do you use each terms, okay? Now, this is the best simplified example of this. All right. Now, chromosome, by definition, is just basically DNA molecules in a cell, okay? And what you have to understand on chromosomes uh, is it can take on many different forms depending on the stage of the cell cycle. A chromosome may be referred to as a chromatin. A chromosome can be referred to as a chromatid or a chromosome may be also referred to as sister chromatids on different stages of the cell cycle, all right? Now, when do you call it a chromatin? You basically call it a chromatin when the DNA molecules are all coiled around histone proteins, but they're quite long and very thin structures, usually in interface, okay? They are referred to as chromatids when the DNA undergoes supercoiling. As you can see here, on the left, the chromatin and chromatid, they are exactly the same. The chromatin is made up of one DNA molecule. The chromatid is made up of one DNA molecule as well. Okay, They are exactly the same, except the way they appear. The chromatin is a very long and thin structure, but the chromatid is a very short and thick structure. That is the main difference between the two of them. Then what are sister chromatids? Sister chromatids are just what happens when two identical chromatids are joined at the centromere. And then if you were a student, you feel like banging your head against the wall. Why? Because there's another new word, centromere. So students are like, oh my God, centromere? Really? A new word? I'm like, yeah, just, just, just go with it. Okay, let's, we, we <laughs> in biology, sometimes we, it's like being introduced to new people and new friends and new, <laughs> uh, new concepts uh, on the fly. Okay, so let's just go with it. So as you can see, these two chromatids are joined together in the middle, right? I'm highlighting the pink chromatid to show you where it is. And I'm also highlighting the blue chromatid. And the pink and blue chromatids are exactly the same, but they are joined in the middle. And that area where they are joined is called the centromere. And when they are joined together, you refer to it as something called sister chromatids. And the sister chromatids is made up of two DNA molecules, but they are both joined together. The weird thing is, this is where biology becomes frustrating, okay? The chromatin is referred to as one chromosome. The chromatid is also referred to as one chromosome. And the sister chromatid, a lot of times students will say, oh, the sister chromatid, the sister chromatid is two chromosomes. No, we will still refer to the sister chromatid as one chromosome. The reason why we are referring it to as one chromosome is because they are both joined together, all right? It's a little bit frustrating, but you have to understand that. When it takes the form of a sister chromatid, even though it's made up of two DNA molecules, you still refer to it as one chromosome because it's one unit, it's joined together, all right? Now, so if you look at this cell over here, okay, I'm just drawing it out and I'm showing you the number of chromosomes there. I've numbered it. How many chromosomes do they have? One, two, three, four. They are four chromosomes. They take on the form of four chromatins, all right? If we were to look at another cell, there are also four chromosomes. They take on the form of four sister chromatids. In this case, this cell also, there are four chromosomes. They take on the form of four chromatids. But why? Why does the cell need to do all these things? Why do the chromosomes have to take on the form of chromatin, chromatids, sister chromatids? Like, why does it need to do all these things? Very simple. Now imagine a cell and the cell only has one chromatin and when it undergoes interface, if you remember, it will double the number of chromosomes. Okay, now the cell has two chromatins. They are very long and thin. That's how, I, that's how I remember it. Chromatins are long and thin, all right? So uh, that's just the way I've memorized it. Um, 
And when the cell wants to, now the cell is an interface, okay? And remember, after interface, what's the cell supposed to do? The cell is supposed to divide its nucleus. But it cannot divide the chromosomes equally because they are a tangled mess, right? So what does it do? It will supercoil to produce something called sister chromatids. It's easy to break them into half. And now the sister chromatid is split into two identical chromatids. I'm highlighting it for you, just to show, just show it to you over there. And then they will uncoil and the chromatids will reform to become their chromatin forms, basically. All right? And that is how you get two genetically identical cells in the end. All right? Uh, some students will ask the question, uh, why can't the why can't the DNA just uh, remain in its coiled form, the chromatid form? Um, the, the main reason is because if it's in the chromatid form, the cell will not be able to access the genetic information. Uh, the cell will not be able to do a process known as transcription of the gene, which is important in Chapter 6. So coiling to form the sister chromatid only needs to happen to break the DNA apart. After you break the DNA apart or separate the DNA, it has to return back to its uncoiled, long and thin form so that the cell can use the DNA for whatever it needs to use it for. I hope that makes sense. And I'm just uh, putting it over here for you. So in interface, we have mitotic phase and we have cytokinesis. If you look at the cell, how many chromosomes are in the cell? One, because it's just one unit. How many chromosomes are in those two in, in that cell over there? Two, because you have one chromosome, which I've highlighted in pink, and one over there highlighted in blue. So just a quick structure of a chromatid. The chromatid is a structure that is made up of something called centromere in the middle and also telomeres at the ends of it. I will talk about telomeres later on, all right? And centromeres, I'll also explain it later. And the yellow parts where I'm highlighting, if you can see the yellow parts I'm highlighting over there, these are referred to as something called genes. These are actually the important structures in a cell. Uh, these are known as the genetic information that the cell needs uh, to code for specific polypeptides, which we will explain further in chapter six. So the chromatid from the top of the telomere to the gene, to the centromere, to the genes, and again to the bottom, which is the telomere, they are all made up of DNA and histone proteins, all the way from the top to the bottom. But only the yellow parts, the genes, are actually called genetic information because that's the part that is the important part in the cell. That's the important part to allow the cell to code for specific proteins. I hope this makes sense.